Can you hear me? Hey, hi, Gaurav. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for joining in Alok. I know it was an 11th hour invitation that I sent to you. And you being a mindfulness coach, you were extremely mindful about this. And I'm glad that we could connect on this platform together. <laughs> it's it's my pleasure, Gaurav. It's, it's always good to connect with like-minded forces, like-minded people. And, um, you know, when we come together, we can actually create some kind of magic and, and make a difference. Sure, right? sure. Yes. So, so I just wanted to like uh, mention this thing to the listeners that uh, I got connected with Alok through LinkedIn and I've been following a lot of uh, his posts that I keep sharing and different, different videos that I keep sharing. So uh, I get a lot of value from all your posts and all your insights that you share on LinkedIn and different, different platforms that you use. So I became aware about uh, the nuances of mindfulness from you. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. I'm glad, Gaurav. Uh, really good to know that. Uh, and that's the intention, you know, Gaurav. That's mm-hmm. the intention. That's the objective uh, to spread the knowledge and awareness about mindfulness. And um, I think that mindfulness is one of the most important skills that people need to learn and inculcate, mm-hmm. especially when we are going through these tough times. And it's it's not only about uh, this pandemic and the COVID that we have been talking about. Even before this, there have been a lot of crises and and that's the nature of life, isn't that, Gaurav? You know, life is not a straight line, it's a curve. We have our ups and downs and and we are going to face these kind of crises. So it's, it's better that we, um, you know, prepare ourselves to be more resilient and to have that clarity. So mindfulness helps in doing that. And I generally tell this, Gaurav, that I, I don't uh, preach mindfulness because I teach it. I, I preach mindfulness because I practice it. <laughs> and, and, and I know that uh, how impactful it can be for people. Definitely. I, being an experiential learner, I completely second whatever that you're saying, Alok. Because till the time you're not experiencing something, you can't even make people aware about it. So thank you so much for experiencing that. All thanks to the Almighty that he made you experience that so that you can go on that journey to make people aware about it. You know, better I, yeah, Gaurav, the thing is, you know, I, I do tell people that I have been practicing this right from mm-hmm. the age of 15. Beautiful. But uh, let me let me tell you that I never liked doing that. <laughs> I never, I, I never <laughs> voluntarily uh, started doing it. I was made to do it. I was forced to do it. Oh. And I'm sure that, you know, um, every one of us, we have such things in our lives that we never liked doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but later on, when we look back, we are actually thankful for, uh, you know, whosoever made us do that. So mm-hmm. something similar also happened with me. Uh, at, at that moment of time, you know, I, I used to just think that, uh, what what is the use of doing all this you know what is the use of meditating what is the use of sitting like this with your eyes closed uh, it's better to sleep compared to this right but i never i never understood this but later on while i was going through my stressful sure. corporate uh, experience right mm-hmm. i have 14 years of stressful work <laughs> life experience um, at that moment of time i was able to see how these practices really helped me to uh, keep myself calm, to gain clarity in such chaotic situations. So that's when I was really thankful uh, to my parents, my guides, my teachers for making me do this. So um, this is interesting, Alok, uh, because uh, there is a very beautiful insight that you are bringing to the table, which is being a devil's advocate. Mm. And being (laughs) a devil's advocate is almost like you're doing a reflection on your own, on your own experience. You're yes. in that victim self which is speaking to you right now. You're doing those perceptual positions. You're going back into those uh, jo- that journey, that timeline that you went through. But that is very interesting. And uh, it gives me more clarity how exactly you're going on this journey of mindfulness. So um, let's start with this journey. Let, let's start with the time. Let's start with the, with the child, Alok, who started becoming aware about it because he was, he was pushed into this journey mm. rather than his intent or the desire to be there. If you feel like sharing, please. Yeah, so um, the thing is, uh, Guru, I had uh, a very conventional, um, you know, vision or a dream that uh, that every individual has, um, that uh, you, you do your studies, you complete your studies, uh, get an admission in a nice college and then mm get a nice placement, have a handsome salary, 
uh, you know, get have married. a beautiful wife. <laughs> yeah, have a beautiful wife. Have have nice uh, family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all this very conventional. Everyone mm-hmm. will be able to connect with this, right? Nothing extraordinary. Mm-hmm. And honestly, um, uh, Gaurav, I never, never, ever thought that I'll become a coach. You know, this was never on my cards. This was never on my agenda. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> sorry. In fact, I always used to think uh, that you know how how can people uh, talk publicly and how can mm-hmm. people be so extrovert? Because I'm an introvert by nature, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and I, I was that I was that kid in the class who always used to be on the last, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 wanted to hide behind uh, students and don't want to come in that limelight. I never wanted that spotlight because I was shy. I used to see people. Uh, Uh, taking part in uh, elocution competition and speeches mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and um, singing competitions and this and that and I was so shy I was I had a lot of uh, fear that you mm-hmm. know how will I be judged etc because I was a fat kid mm-hmm. and um, not good in studies <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah I mean I was below average mm-hmm. so I had a lot of complications you know that ways I, mm-hmm. I, I I had no confidence. but um, later on what happened is uh, you know i went through my education um, and then somewhere my father wanted me to get into um, the management studies not do mm-hmm. my bcom and stuff mm-hmm. he wanted me to uh, get into management studies so that's how i got my graduation my bachelor's of management studies mm-hmm. and then he wanted me to pursue mba uh, do a post graduation so then i got my mba So now, when you do all these educational, uh, you know, you cover all these layers, automatically you gain some kind of confidence, right? So mm-hmm. that that's what started happening, and I started interacting with people, and that's how I started getting that outlook of the actual world, as we say, you know, quoted. Um, this is a bookish mm-hmm. knowledge that is a on the street knowledge. So that's how I started gaining that experience and outlook. Um, but then, when I got into uh, my corporate life, got off. that's mm-hmm. when uh, you know things started heating up because everything is really nice and cool it sounds great you know now i'm getting into the real world now you know i'm going to do a job it sounds so exciting mm-hmm. but then when i and i got into sales because i did mba in marketing and i got into sales um initially it was super exciting but but then later on i started feeling that heat you know mm-hmm. that um, pressures and target and mm-hmm. unrealistic client demands and expectations and every month you have a meeting your qbrs and stuff like that and handling clients and client demands and stuff like that it was crazy you know it was crazy mm-hmm. and that's when i started to feel that heat that stress and pressure and got to let me tell you that i have experienced crazy stress i have experienced burnouts i have experienced certain superficial levels of depression mm-hmm. i have experienced all that uh but somewhere gorov i thought and i was able to find and i was able to resonate with the fact that i was not as badly affected as my colleagues were as my bosses were as my team members were right because we all were facing the same kind of stresses mm-hmm. but somewhere um i had developed that kind of resistance where i was able to hold myself and was able to manage my perspectives in those stressful moments Mm-hmm. that's when got a uh, you know something really struck me and it was the realization that my practices are really working for mm-hmm. me you know beautiful yeah uh, my my mindfulness practice my meditation practice my breathing practices they are really helping me they are really keeping me calm they are giving they are able to give me that perspective and that clarity uh and that's where got a I thought to myself that if these things they help they are helping me they were they are working for me they can mm-hmm. work for everyone right mm-hmm. because biologically and psychologically we are structured in the same manner so that's where gorov i got its thought of let me you know jump out of this and do something where i can help people with my practices so that's where this thought of eastern mindfulness and having this platform and everything was born so this is very interesting alok uh, because normally when i have a conversation with coaches Mm-hmm. or trainers or facilitators per se they never talk about their vulnerabilities and i mm-hmm. i was just watching this video by uh, ben brown where even simon sinek um, mm-hmm. one of the tech talks where they mentioned that how vulnerability is so powerful mm, it is it is 
it is very powerful because it helps us to become aware about our voids and the journey mm. that we have gone through to fill those voids and that becomes like a great learning when we reflect on the journey it becomes a great mm. learning that's why you are a coach because you have mm. that empathy towards mm. the people around you because you want whatever the whatever the nuances that you went through the hardships that you went through the mm. ordeals that you went through you have reflected you have learned and now you are providing that value to the people so mm. kudos to you more power to you <laughs> but god of uh, uh, you know i i also uh, see you know let's understand this mm-hmm. um when we try to reflect on our vulnerabilities how vulnerable mm-hmm. we are right mm-hmm. that that gives us a reality check mm-hmm. that hey listen you are not immortal right you are just like others you are mm-hmm. a human being you have Beautiful. five senses you Beautiful. you uh, you are mortal and mm-hmm. uh, and you have gone through these uh, tough times mm-hmm. uh you have those low points in your lives and and even now gorov even now you don't have that shield around you right you are you every day you are learning you are growing you are becoming a better version of yourself mm-hmm. and uh, for entire life of yours you need to remain a student only then you will learn Beautiful. and you will be able to protect yourself right Beautiful. because because if you are not able to embrace your vulnerabilities mm-hmm. then maybe you are in some kind of la la land where you think that <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm untouchable or something like that yeah. because yeah. that's where ego catches you right mm-hmm. the ego of you are a coach the ego of you are teaching people the ego mm-hmm. of you are helping people no 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 it's not that way you are learning you are growing and in the process you are also lending a hand to someone else beautiful, beautiful. i remember uh, recently one of my students they asked me so what mm-hmm. do you understand by coach mm-hmm. so the so the first picture that came to me was those railway coaches that come <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like the first time when the britishers they introduced these railway coaches and mm-hmm. i was thinking i was thinking what is a coach a coach is mm-hmm. a place where you sit and it it's comfortable when you're sitting mm. there and it's taking mm. you through a journey so what is a coach or who is a coach who mm. takes you through a comfortable journey of self realization very true beautiful that's what the mm. coach is <laughs> that's a nice metaphor yeah sure. wonderful so i'm mm. glad that uh, i got in touch with you and uh, there's someone who is uh, talking about mindfulness and uh, when you mentioned about mm-hmm. your academy when you mentioned about mm. your vision uh, of eastern mindfulness I believe mm. and I very strongly feel that you connect with eastern philosophy right mm. yeah you want to talk a bit about that so um so when i talk about eastern mindfulness the idea mm-hmm. here is got of that uh, you know the the whole science of mindfulness mm-hmm. it it has originated from the east beautiful right and um, when we talk about our sanatan and the rishis and the maharishis mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh when they used to do their meditations their self realization practices so mindfulness is a very tiny bit of that it's it's like just one drop of the ocean mm-hmm. right um now the thing is um it's it's a long story wherein mm-hmm. um, how how this came into existence it 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 all started uh, from the sanatan mm-hmm. where uh, where buddha right mm-hmm. siddhartha gautama that he was a he was a ruler he was a prin- pr- uh, mm-hmm. prince right mm-hmm. and uh, then he was sent to this rishis and ma because because earlier then there was the system of gurukul right mm-hmm. the the sons of the king they used to go there to learn so he learned certain things from this rishis and um, he was enlightened in terms of uh it it really interested him that uh you know this is something that i need to understand and he found some kind of depth and some kind of resonance in what the sanatan teachings were mm-hmm. and from there he picked up certain things and um, he started practicing on himself and he was then he attained um self realization right so from that period onwards he came up with a practice called uh, sati patana mm-hmm. right and sati patana is um, is a practice where you channelize your senses 
your awareness your attention your focus inwards Beautiful. right so now if you see most of the times most of us got our, our senses are outwards right mm-hmm. we are always looking out for things that are happening around us mm-hmm. uh people around us situations that we are in but hardly we focus inwards right uh inwards in the sense what am i feeling what am i thinking what is actually happening in me why is this happening with me etc so those kind of reflections and self introspections are like we seldom do that so sati patana was the practice of focusing inwards and um, then buddha he created his own uh, tribe and this entire culture of buddhism started from there mm-hmm. and the only focus was to focus inside <laughs> right the mm-hmm. only focus of the entire tribe was to focus inside uh later on uh then we have this uh, you know people like dalai lama and all the um uh, uh, the buddhist monks mm-hmm. they started practicing this and it was like this this entire thing was then progressed then there were certain western um researchers western scientists who came to india in search of the mysticism you know they wanted to understand what exactly is happening here in the east mm-hmm. so they came here they they met the lai lama they met other monks they saw how things are happening they were really intrigued right and then uh, the lai lama was called to the west uh, in order to um, you know test what is being said from the scientific perspective mm-hmm. so then uh, th- because there was anyway there was a lot of advancement which which had already taken place in the west in terms of uh, the machines and you know to do all the research and um, the mris the fmris the mm-hmm. eegs and all these machines right mm-hmm. uh, the scanning devices and then they started um, uh, having this tests on the monks the monks mm-hmm. who have been meditating for hours and hours and days and days and months and months and that's when uh, everything came to their surprise that meditation and mindfulness and this entire sati patana what they were they they were practicing at that moment of time mindfulness didn't exist the word mindfulness didn't exist mm-hmm. it was just sati patana okay so then when they give this scientific angle to it that you know um this does wonders sati patana does wonders it changes the brain structure it changes mm-hmm. the way you think it actually uh, brings in uh, the neuroplasticity function of your brain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um it it changes the neurocortex and that's when science started digging deep because they found something really significant you know this is how we can actually help people to be better versions of themselves etc etc mm-hmm. from the scientific perspective so that's when this entire uh, thing of sati patana was then given a name called mindfulness mm. you know it is it is a practice of being in the moment a uh, moment to moment awareness to be in the present not to be judgmental and this entire new definition of mindfulness was coined by the researchers by the scientists mm-hmm. so but if you look in the the roots of this entire thing it is all uh, it all boils down to the eastern philosophy you right? the roots are here so that's the reason uh, you know i wanted to bring this element back into existence that um, it's it's not a western concept mm-hmm. it is it is a eastern concept it's very much of the the origin the uh, our origin here and that's where i wanted to bring that element and that uh, tint of eastern mindfulness but but more than where it originated from got what i'm really interested mm-hmm. in is that people practice it and mm-hmm. uh, and 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 bring that uh, you know benefits into their life because that is what is more important uh other than understanding where it originated from mm-hmm. exactly yeah. because um, i also like believe in this thing a lot where you have an awareness towards something and then you go mm-hmm. into the experience of having an intention and a desire mm-hmm. and then comes the action and the reflection and then the learning comes but till the time right. you're not putting yourself into the action you will not get that larger awareness about the thing you have to mm. get to that experience you have to get into the action so very well said uh, alok and thank you so much for sharing all those roots of mindfulness uh, sati patana and how it originated how the enlightenment of buddha and all that was very insightful so um Thanks, i just sir. wanted to ask uh, like um, 
I know we have a dearth of time and I'm being mindful about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gaurav. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sure, sure. So I just uh, quickly wanted to like uh, understand like what were those obstacles that you faced in your path when you're going on this journey of becoming a mindfulness coach? Oh, that's a that's a long story, Gaurav, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the journey is never simple, right? The journey mm-hmm. is never simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, Gaurav, uh, you know there there has been multiple occasions in my mm-hmm. journey where i realized how important mindfulness is, is for mm-hmm. me right mm-hmm. and how it can do wonders in our lives now the first the first incident that i shared um, was about my corporate the, experience right? corporate experience yeah. uh, where daily ups and downs and mindfulness really helped me to bring that clarity mm-hmm. now um, post that gorov um, you know i i then i had this idea and this dream and this vision that let me do something mm-hmm. and i started uh, back of my mind and the hindsight i started uh, planning a startup right oh, now wow. it, it 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 becomes difficult uh, to make that switch from being a corporate professional to a entrepreneur or a budding mm-hmm. entrepreneur mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because because there's a different mindset altogether when you are a corporate professional you you have a different mindset Uh, and if you want to become an entrepreneur you need to have a different mindset right mm-hmm. um but i i knew that there there would be challenges in terms of finances in terms of uh, you know having that kind of structure and a go ahead and a team and uh, the technical difficult difficulties and 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 the legal aspects of mm-hmm. it and forming an organization so there were so many things which were going in my mind and at that moment of time i had couple of my friends we have been discussing about you know doing a startup or getting into some kind of dream project and stuff like that mm-hmm. so what i thought is got up at that moment of time i had this idea that let me do one thing mm-hmm. let me on on the hindsight let me just plan a kind of a structure or a blueprint for my mindfulness dream project but at the same time i will do something with my friends you know i will come up come up with some kind of venture and we'll get the b- ball rolling right mm-hmm. um so that i'm out of my my job because i have some savings i'm out of mm-hmm. my job and then we create this kind of project uh, where we start running the show we have some cash flow mm-hmm. and at the uh, at the same time simultaneously i also keep on working on my dream project that is the mindfulness thing mm-hmm. so we gave it a shot we planned um, to get into some distribution product distribution project uh, my my aim was just to have this project as a cash flow mm-hmm. like with my friends with couple of my friends mm-hmm. so i just got off my job and uh, we started working on this i started pumping in all my savings and stuff like that and uh, what happened is got of uh, very soon i realized that i had made a big mistake a big mistake because the planning was not right the financial planning was not right uh the projections were not right and we were in some kind of dreamland that this will work that will work and that this is how we will take off etc etc mm-hmm. and after 8 months i was out of the job for 8 months i was uh, completely into this i put all my savings into it so now what i realized is this is not going to work and this entire project that we were planning three mm-hmm. of us uh, myself and two of my friends it fell flat on its face and it was a huge failure mm-hmm. so i lost my job uh, of course i was out of my job for 8 8 months mm-hmm. um i lost my time my resources uh my money my savings and everything you know and um, i had no idea no idea what am I, what am i going to do because you can relate right where if you are out of the job for 8 months then your exactly. cv doesn't look good yeah right there's a gap uh, yeah there's a gap 8 months gap that's a huge gap mm-hmm. and uh, then i had no idea what's what's going to happen because also you would agree to this god of that when you lose when you fail you mm-hmm. don't just lose your money your resources your time you lose your self confidence and self esteem as well Definitely. and that was the time when i was very low on my self confidence very low on my self esteem i had no money um i i was not able to understand what do i do forward and and at that moment of time that mindfulness project i just kept it on side because how do i fund it 
how do i how do i bring that confidence to start something new because if you want to start something new you need to have the right kind of mindset right <laughs> because that was not the right time for me to even look at it <laughs> but at that moment of time got of uh, my i i never left my mindfulness practices i never left my meditation practices <laughs> even in my 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 darkest days i used to practice so and you were that, you were always in that mode of action i'm so sorry i have stopped you yeah there. yeah yeah you were yeah, always yeah. in that mode of action sure yes yes because it became my habit got it was like you know you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth right <laughs> no matter what you brush your teeth right no matter what you take a shower <laughs> right so so when you do a certain thing over and over again it becomes your habit <laughs> so similarly when you when i kept on practicing when i kept on meditating every day it became my habit it is like you have to do this no matter what wow so so that's when that's when it gave me a lot of clarity it it made me resilient it mm-hmm. it 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 brought that beginner's mindset in me that mm-hmm. no matter where i am i can always start my journey again wow and wow. that was a very powerful thought um god of you know no matter where you are you no matter how how low you are you can always take that first step Beautiful. so that beginner's mindset was i was able to think about it because of my 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 mindfulness practices because i was able to keep calm i was not getting agitated not getting irritated not getting frustrated <laughs> there were low moments but still i was able to hold myself back and that's what i think mental resilience is it really mm-hmm. doesn't matter how many times you fall what counts is how many times you get up right that's what helps you mm-hmm. so at that moment of time gorav what i did was i i um, updated my resume and i again started applying for jobs wow. uh it was difficult because once you leave your job you're out coming of the job coming back again yeah yeah you you visioning yourself as a budding entrepreneur then again you're taking a job it's it's not easy it's mm-hmm. very difficult and i again took a job and uh, then i i started upgrading my skills i started updating my skills i took a lot of online courses mm-hmm. and then i got into a job and then i gave my 200% and i um, excelled there uh, manager mm-hmm. and then leader and then team leader and all that that mm-hmm. happened for a few years and i was doing exceptionally well in terms of my performance in terms of uh, leading teams and departments mm-hmm. handling clients uh, i also had a good financial standpoint by then at that moment of time that was the right mindset got of that was the right mindset for me to make that switch because you know i told you that if you want to start something new you need to be in the right mindset mm-hmm. so that was the right mindset when i thought that i should make the shift and then i left my job uh, and at the same time i was also planning simultaneously about this eastern mindfulness project and then finally i launched it <laughs> so so mindfulness has really helped me during my low times whenever i whenever i found myself in the low it was always there to help me yeah so so the best thing that i i love about the discussion that you're having is a look that you were pushed into something which you never had a connection towards mm-hmm. somehow when you were down you were down in your life at that point it it just came out of your subconscious that i still have this mm-hmm. and you yes. started putting yourself in the action and mm-hmm. when you reached that stage where you were you made it a habit and a behavior even mm. at that time a time came where you were still contemplating what am i supposed to do and yes, then you yeah. emptied your cup and then you filled your cup again then you emptied it again they were mm. constantly going through that journey of learning unlearn unlearning and relearning mm. so that's yeah. very interesting that's very interesting no i so, i okay. even 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 right now when i'm just remembering all that i'm getting goosebumps mm. you know because, <laughs> because it was not a easy time because not yeah. it was not a easy yeah. time i i can i can remember that Uh, but but i'm glad that um i'm i'm not bragging about anything but mm-hmm. with a very humble heart humble heart you know it's, it's it's it was just a learning period it was just a learning phase yeah. but i'm but i'm glad that uh, alok you went through all those turmoils i'm so sorry i have to say that but i, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that god gave you an opportunity he gave you and he created a medium he made you cute so that you can you can go through those things so that you can help people because till the time you don't experience how can you make them aware and yes, uh, yes. you had that intensity you had that uh, 
uh, that dream that vision to help people to create to create that environment and ecosystem which you are right now doing and losing yourself i always believe that when we lose ourselves that is time when i find when we find ourselves that is what i uh, very strongly mm, believe beautiful <laughs> yes 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 and in fact in fact god of uh, whosoever are listening to this podcast right now mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and whosoever will listen the recorded version of it i just want to tell everyone that never give up on yourself beautiful never never give up on your life because uh there is always a way out okay if you are not able to see the solution that doesn't mean there is no solution beautiful. you are just not able to see it because there is a passing cloud let the cloud pass let the sun shine again and you will see the path so yes. so don't don't give up right because because in my life i had so many such ups and downs in fact there is one more episode which is the which is the latest episode i would like mm-hmm. to share that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that is about the covid right oh. uh every everything everything was going well uh mm-hmm. you know we are like actually on the top of the mountain and you know uh <laughs> nice seminars and programs going in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all of a sudden we get to know that there are no flights taking up Uh, now everything is from work from home and we had a ratio of like somewhere around 95-5 but 95% was all physical trainings and coaching and only 5% was like uh, follow up webinars and stuff and uh, when this thing happened we had no idea what's going to happen we had no idea I mean uh, how how will we run the show how will we survive what is the business model uh, mm-hmm. will this entire thing shut down What what's going to happen because there was no clarity So even at that moment of time got of uh, thinking through my practice and having that clarity having that vision it really helped me to think through those tough times and that's when i thought that hey listen you know i already have this this realization that i already have uh, the knowledge i already have the modules i already have the the entire structure ready what i need to you know as of now is a platform mm-hmm. okay? only the platform is missing everything else is there and that platform is nothing but the digital platform right so that's when we started shifting from the physical to digital and in fact the entire covid period was super productive for us because we launched our online courses we launched our uh, our, our digital coaching module we launched our application uh, a new website and everything so this entire covid period was like a boon for us because we were able to move out of our comfort zone and establish the digital aspect of the business as well wow that's beautiful i always i always believe that a person who goes through a lot of ordeals mm. and they reflect and they never say no have a uh, and never say no attitude they will always succeed they will always mm. succeed so i just want to say hello thank you so much thank you so much for joining in thank you so much for doing this and i know that i i i chimed in with you at an 11th hour and you were like so so helpful to me for becoming a part of it and it's always wonderful listening to you and there was such wonderful insight that you shared you just took me through a journey and whenever you speak uh, you are the person who feels everything on a deeper level you think you feel and you believe and then you start doing it and i always love to have a conversation with uh, like minded individuals like like you and definitely more power to you and all that you're doing we just hope that uh, we can transcend this particular podcast and a lot of people can uh, take a lot of value from whatever that you have to share with the card to mindfulness and different different learning aspects of life So thank it, you so much for coming. It's in. my pleasure, Agarov. It's my pleasure. Um, I'm always looking out for opportunities where I can go and add value. And uh, Agarov, you're doing a great job. Keep up this thank you. good thank work, you so and uh, keep bringing a lot of other people in. Because I I believe that you know when people from different backgrounds and different fields they come in and they pour their perspectives. Sure. There's a lot of learning for other people as exactly. well. Exactly. right so this kind of interventions they really add up a lot of value and uh, thank you god once again right from the bottom of my heart i extend my gratitude and uh, more power to you god bless you and stay strong stay mindful god thank you so much alu thank you so much for doing this and you have a great day <laughs> you too you too thanks thanks take care brother take care bye bye